Hey there everybody, it's really good to see you there. Welcome along to another video here with me, Jennifer Kirk. And uh, I've got something a little bit special today. We're going to take a delve into some of the bits and pieces that I've been picking up. So without further ado, come with me and we'll take a closer look. <laughs> There's one thing which I really have a soft spot for, and it has to be said, is the Hornby Class 8. The Backman one is a good model, but the Hornby one goes the extra mile, in my opinion. It is a bit more expensive, but I think it does offer value for money for that extra cost. And we've got here from the current range, the Lara Diesel Depot Class 8 in the Heritage Blue livery, but with the Lara Diesel Depot Anniversary nameplates. Now, I'm just looking here on the box. We've got uh, catalogue number R3485, and you can see there, BR060 diesel electric, class 8 locomotive, uh, 08644. So it's certainly one which uh, I was very eager to see when it came out. I already possess four of the Hornby class 8s, but there's always room in a collection for a few more. It's pretty standard packaging from Hornby. They do like their slip cases with an actual photograph of the model. And as you can see, once you get this far in, it's probably as well to have that because it shows off the model a lot better than trying to view it through all of this plastic does. When these first came out, there's a lot of polystyrene in their packaging, but I do quite prefer these uh, plastic uh, innards, even though they can be a bit tricky to get into. You seem to have layer off after layer, but it does mean that the model itself is pretty well protected. In fact, I'm just trying to get in here. These are new. These side pieces, they do seem to hold everything in quite intact, but uh, that is actually a little bit trickier to get into than I was uh, thinking it would be. But just going to show you this before I put the packaging away. We get an extra little bag with all of the buffer beam details. If you want to do put all that on for, for example, if you're going to put this in a display cabinet or use three link couplings, it's all there for you to do. And we've got a whole host of different pipes. I believe this may well have been a dual fitted loco with both vacuum and air brakes. And there's certainly a few more jumper cables in there too. The model itself, well, it's what we've come to expect from Hornby. A really nice model, very, very well finished, well put together. And I'm just gonna check there, they still got, yes, they have. Um, it's probably a little bit tricky for me to show you that without my finger being in the way, but you'll have to take it from me that these cab doors do open. Now you might think that's a bit of a gimmick, and I suppose in a way that dates back to the fact that these models were tooled up when labour costs in China were a lot cheaper, and it has possibly become a little bit of a millstone for Hornby. We see it on some of their other models, not least the Class 31, because it must add a little bit to the cost of the model, but it does mean that you have an opportunity to put a few cameos in. It's been suggested to me that if you shave a very small piece of something Thing like plastic sprue you can use it as a wedge to hold the door open or if you're a bit more daring you can remove the spring and perhaps put a driver figure in the doorway so it does give you a little bit of potential and I do like that even though it does add a little bit to the cost. In terms of other things the area which, where I feel that the Hornby model shines over the Backman competition is on the coupling rods they are much finer on the Hornby model, and you can see here on this example, it's no exception. And actually, once you've seen these, it really does stand out compared to the Backman model. The rest of the livery application is pretty crisp. We've got this 
pretty nice rendition of the BR Rail Blue. Although in practice when you saw these locomotives, unless they were fresh out of works, that did tend to fade down a little bit. And it would be nice actually if uh, both Bachman and Hornby did release more models in a sort of ready faded look. As far as I'm aware, only Bachman have ever done that with 08507, which was actually quite some time ago as a club exclusive. But in my view, actually it still looks pretty good in this works fresh livery. All the handrails are factory applied. There's not really anything to apply if you're not going to bother with any of that buffer beam detail. And uh, we've got some pretty robust handrails there on the cab. And that's something which certainly on the earlier Backman models were very prone to damage. So it's pleasing to see that the Hornby model is a little bit more robust. We've got the perfectly uh, represented uh, outside frames there with the wheel set. Everything is as you would expect it. I'm just going to slowly turn this over. Um, it's pretty easy to access this model and that's the other plus point that I find with the Hornby model is if you want to get inside it there is only one screw which actually releases the body from the chassis so be a little bit careful if you want to get into one of these don't get too gung-ho and uh, take off all the screws that you see because some of those are holding in detail bits which you don't actually really need to mess about with and I do like that it makes fitting DCC chips to these an awful lot easier easier. Hornby has released in their TTS range the TTS sound chip suitable for the Class 8 diesel shunter. Now I've bought some of these and I've tried retrofitting these into even some of the older Hornby models and it has to be said that they are very well designed, that they will fit without any modification required into both old and new models alike. The couplings are in standard NEM pockets in there and they're Pretty unobtrusive, hidden away behind some of the details. So if you don't want these couplings on, you can remove them. You don't have to carry out surgery to remove an ugly NEM pocket because it will be hidden away underneath. Running characteristics of this model are pretty smooth, it has to be said. Everything that you expect from these with their five pole skew wound motors, they are very powerful, very good and smooth, slow speed running. And really I have nothing whatsoever to fault with them. The actual livery application on this example, well, we've got the BR double arrow, very crisply applied, all the handrails picked out accurately in white. We've got the nameplate here on the side. It is tampo printed. There are no etched nameplates with this model. And I know some people do like the etched nameplates to uh, be there to be applied separately. But for me, I never tend to fit them. And I don't think that this tampo printing is actually in any way inferior to an etched nameplate. So I'm quite happy with this as is. Other tampo printed detail, we've got all of this uh, legible lettering on the sole bar. And then we've got the number, the tops panel and uh, a plate there underneath, all accurately and very legibly printed on there. And really, we've come to expect this from all manufacturers. The uh, actual clarity of the detail application is always superb. It's really raised the bar. So actually, we only really notice it if it's not up to scratch, if you have any fuzziness on there, and actually it doesn't appear to be anything on this at all. The wasp stripes on the end, again, another area where sometimes you can see fuzziness on certain models. And with this Hornby model, those wasp stripes are incredibly sharp, and I do like that. Hornby have become very, very good at applying these. All the buffers are sprung and they're pretty free sprung buffers. So if you want to say use three link couplings, these are actually fully usable as is without any kind of modification. And I know a few people who prefer to run their stock like that have no qualms, no gripes with these. The rest of the model, well, we've got a stripe along the top of the cab and bonnet there in red, which for me actually always reminds me of the GNER livery. And then we've got a black cab roof, which from a crew's point of view on the real model tended to make these quite warm in summer because the black does absorb the sun's rays. But in model form, it's an accurate rendition of the real model. In terms of other detail, we've got a sliding roof hatch there. It can be modelled in the open 
or the shut position. And that is surprisingly robust, I find. Um, you know, on some models, you're always very worried that it's going to just come apart in your hands. But with this, there's no feeling of that. It does feel very well attached there, very well put together. And it does slide tremendously easily. So you can model this any which way you want. And that is a nice touch that makes it stand out over and above the Backman model. Wasp stripes on the front, again, really, really sharp and accurately we've got the wasp stripes carried over onto the front of the battery and compressor boxes. Buffer beams are red. Uh, some of these locomotives had yellow buffer beams. This one is accurately modelled with the red. And then we've got the steps that were used by shunters to uh, stand on in the early days to roam around the yards. And also, whilst we do have some of these uh, climbing uh, grab rails up there, there's no nose ladder, which is accurate for a locomotive that postdates major electrification. Overall, this is a really good package. It's exactly what we expect from Hornby. The quality control has not slipped throughout the production life of this model. And it's nice to see yet another new livery, suitable as it is, from 2012 onwards. But certainly it's a great model and would feel equally at home on pretty much any layout. In terms of value for money, they are becoming quite expensive now. I think the RRP on this is around the £140 mark, so that is quite expensive for a shunter. But that's probably really the only detraction that I have on this model is the price. So overall, as a package, this model still holds its own after all these years. I think it's been on the market now a good 10 years, and it's still as good as it was when it came out. There's nothing really on here which I feel that Hornby needs to address and I'd give this a good solid 9.8 out of 10 and it really only loses that 0.2 of a mark for me on the price. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that. Don't forget to like this video, tickle that like button. All those thumbs up are really much appreciated. And uh, also, if you've not already done so, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. And don't forget as well, you can check out some of our merchandise and also we're there over on Patreon too if you want to support the show. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. I'll see you here again. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns and Offshore Allen. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.